Thanks. Hello, I'm Doc Kesterton. I'm a 63-year-old... Uh, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, retired teacher. And actually, I was a sexual health worker, so I got known around the schools in Sheffield as the sex lady. <laughs> and occasionally as the sex worker. Uh, <laughs> I'm also a partner, a mum, a grandma, and I'm an athlete. I was diagnosed with DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ, which I'd never heard of before last year, uh, last January, uh, following a routine mammogram. Uh, I had day surgery to remove uh, the tumour in last February, and again in March to remove the margins, I'm told. Uh, there were no real physical side effects for me, um, other than the grogginess of the anaesthetic, which actually was worse than the surgery, and, um, and the pain of the incision for which I was prescribed paracetamol. Radiotherapy followed uh, last year at Western Park in May and June. I took advantage of the cancer care treatments at the very wonderful Cavendish uh, Centre, which offers all, all sorts of things, uh, shiatsu, relaxation, and talking therapies, I was very grateful. Um, it put me in touch with other people who might have had some of the questions and uh, share some of the experiences uh, that, that I'd had. Uh, my recent mammogram a few weeks ago was clear and I'm currently free of cancer, I think. Very. <laughs> um, exercising before and after exercise and during and after treatment. This is about physical activity. Um, well, this one's easy for me. Um, it's something I've always done and will always do. Exercise, sport, fitness are part of who I am. It's what I do and have always done. It's what I love doing. And retirement gives me the opportunity to, uh, to do it more than I did before. It helps me define who I am. We'll come back to defining me in a moment. For me, it's vital, and I'd suffer if I couldn't. After the surgery, and with stitches and padding, I was advised to take it easy for a couple of weeks. I walked and did a little strength and conditioning uh, work, but interestingly, I didn't use the turbo trainer that I'd carefully set up. You do know what a turbo trainer is, don't you? <laughs> Hands up! <laughs> It's a bike on a sort of pair of rollers so that you can cycle in your living room. But I didn't use my turbo trainer because for me, exercise needs a context. It needs open air, mostly, with views, uh, which we have in abundance here, uh, with weather, um, regardless of what it is, and if I'm lucky, with friends. I started running after two weeks and I did my first race within a, a month of surgery, um, and I think I've actually got a picture of it. Yay! Park run, Encliffe. Um, that's, I can't remember my time, but it's immaterial. I was back to running again. Um, my breast was hot, just imagine this now. My breast was hot and sore, and my skin was coming off but I used all the prescribed creams and protective pads and just carried on. It was particularly enjoyable running to Western Park and home each day. First of all, I'm lucky enough to live near Western Park. I, I met people there who were travelling from all over the place, but I could jog down through the park. Um, uh, I thought it was a little bit naughty wearing my shorts and vest to go to Western Park, but I thought I might get a telling off from the consultant, but in the end he didn't bat an eyelid, and we just got on with it. The radiotherapy was, t was tiring, and I did get some interesting burns uh, on my breast, but otherwise there were very few symptoms. However, I didn't have chemotherapy. That would be different. My friend was very sick, very miserable, and her chemo went on for a long, prolonged period. She got an infection, uh, which floored her for a while, and her hair came out and she wore a cap. I might not have felt like exercising in those circumstances. 
Even so, as soon as she started to feel better, she was out in the park and was doing bike rides. So we were getting the message between us that we needed to continue to be who we were before the diagnosis. How exercise might have helped. The impact of the diagnosis will have an effect on the patient. Confusion, fear, anger, distress would be common. When I got my diagnosis after quite a painful biopsy, uh, I dealt with it by going for a particularly gruelling felon. <laughs> <laughs> um, tigger tour? Anybody done tigger tour yet? <laughs> no, come on! <laughs> Uh, it's a 10 mile fill race around the Peak District and, it, and that day we had more rain, sleet, snow, hail than you can imagine and I was wet inside and out. Um, however, why? Why would I do that? Because it helps sort things out in your head. You can go, you can shout at Tigator, nobody will hear you because you're a long way behind everybody else. Um, um, question things, talk things through, fall into a bog, get out again, shout, scream, swear, ask a few more questions, sort a few more things out in your head. It's really, really helpful. A sense of proportion, a chance to be on my own, in my own head, to focus on the questions I might have. I followed that up by meeting lots of women who had to choose, who had got to choose between full or partial mastectomy, and so that I could make a decision. I didn't know at that point. I didn't know what treatment I was going to have, um, whether I was going to lose a breast or, um, or or the lumpectomy. And talking to other women as well as doing things like this was very helpful. Why do I exercise? Well, how long have we got? Can I go back again? Yeah. For me, it's incredibly life-affirming. I love the feelings it gives me. There's nothing better than a long, challenging fell run, and I'm off to do Snowden later this year, to make me feel totally alive and buzzing. It's my drug of choice, if you like. The prospect of not exercising during and after cancer was not considered. The benefits for me are physical, it helped with my healing. My heart rate and blood pressure, as well as muscle tone, were barely compromised by the treatment. Mental. A general feeling of well-being comes out of a good workout. It really helped to have a schedule and goals to work towards. The feeling of achievement after a race is a worthwhile reward. Emotional. Joy. Satisfaction. Happiness. Achievement, excitement, all vital for my self-worth at a time when my confidence and feeling of self-worth could plummet. And social, I prefer to get my fix in the company of other women, particularly, and sometimes men. We, I've put slide five there. Uh, social, I prefer to get my fix with lots of other like-minded women, some of whom are living with cancer or um, I, I discovered afterwards because they all then told me that yes, that was me a year ago or whatever. And uh, we can then run, chat, sort out the world and finish with a well-earned coffee and cake. And spiritual, for me not religious, by spiritual I mean stand on the top of Mantor on June the 21st with a bottle of beer and your mates and not feel the absolute wondrousness of nature. Um, some issues that arrive for me, arise for me. Uh, first of all, and I think there's somebody here I read through the programme to do with a body image. Um, we're a nation obsessed with body image. We're, we're perpetually worried about our shape, size, appearance, looks. We're told from a very early age to be thin, to have beautiful, glossy, lustrous hair and very large breasts. For women, six packs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
six packs for men. We'll get the men in there as well. Barbie and Ken, and at the last talk I did, I actually did a Barbie and Ken. Um, and page three girls, I think they do still exist. The media deluges us daily with these images and messages and the multi-billion dollar diet industry feeds off our misery when we fail to conform. Imagine then, as well as being confronted with our own mortality, um, to compound our anxiety, we now face the prospect of losing one or both breasts and for at least for a time all our hair. The effect on our feelings of self-worth could be absolutely devastating. So a visit to the gym or the pool um, where to do this exercise that I've talked about could be just too much to bear, at least for a while. And I'm now going to lose all the friends that I've made this morning because I'm going to mention this word survivor because I'm not entirely comfortable with it. And I apologise in advance. Um, I've got a new identity. I'm called a survivor. I'm not comfortable with it. Uh, another word that she is actually a victim, and I'm victim, I'm even less comfortable with that. If I was in Kathmandu today, I think, and if the odds were really, really, really stacked against me, you could you label me as a survivor. But actually, does, I, don't, I don't want to go there. I prefer to be defined for who I am. I'm a runner, uh, rather than for what I've got. I hope that makes sense, and I hope I haven't offended anybody. But I would ask you to think about the language you use around people with cancer, because I'm still the same person. I haven't changed at all. I'm perhaps more determined now to become the best I can at what I do. I was hoping to be in the top ten in the UK uh, for marathon, but, but I was in the top seven when I got the diagnosis. But um, that's now long gone because I've got to build up my strength and training again. Um, so, um, define me as a runner, but um, because it may, I, I'll, I'll just go back slightly. The word victim, which I have to say haven't been used today, but it is used to describe people who've had cancer and survivor, suggest to me, I can speak for myself, that we are um, in some way a little bit helpless and need a lot of help. And that will, that will be the case with many people. I didn't feel it was for me. Um, and that we're to be pitied. Um, I don't want to feel helpless, and I don't want to be pitied. I want to be me, and I want to be defined by who I am, and not what I had. Um, I think I've already said that, and I'll leave it there. Thank you.